my name is Reed and today we've got a fun EKG here that we're going to deep dive into. If you want to download it, you can follow the link down in the description below um, and download this, this PDF document for free. And if you find that these videos are valuable, the best way to support the channel is just to subscribe or um, become a member for free on our Patreon so we can build our community and um, do great things. So let's jump into this EKG. So the first thing we're going to do is look at the forest and get an idea of what we think is going on with this strip. So I'm going to zoom in and pick maybe V5 here, this rhythm strip, and I notice that I've got what appears to be a wide complex rhythm, and it occurs in these groups of two, right? So I'm getting group beating. It's a wide complex. Let me zoom in here. You can see the QRS is greater than 120 milliseconds or 100 or excuse me, three small boxes. So we've got a wide complex rhythm, but it's got this group beating. So group beating should make you think of um, a second degree type one AV block, or maybe like a by Jimmy, right? So group beating, there's only a few things that can really cause group beating, right? A second degree block where you have, you know, beat, beat, drop, beat, beat, drop, or by Jiminy where you have beat, early beat pause, beat, early beat, pause. And so let's maybe just figure out this wide complex rhythm. I'm, my guess is that it's a bundle branch block in some sort of either by Jiminy or second degree block. So let's take a look at it. And what I'm going to notice is when I look at my QRS morphology, I do notice that I've got in my lateral leads, V5, V6, lead one in AVL, I've got this kind of R and then R prime. I've got this R prime here, R prime in my lateral leads. And you can even see it up in lead one in AVL where you kind of have this slurry return. And that represents late forces that are heading towards the lateral leads. And that usually occurs in the setting of a left bundle branch block where the signal when it comes down the AV node travels rapidly through the right ventricle causing rapid depolarization of the RV. And then you get slow cell to cell gap junction depolarization through the left ventricle towards our lateral leads, right? So we have a left bundle branch block morphology here, but now we need to figure out what's the atrial activity? Is the atria driving this rhythm? Because this is all just kind of guesswork now. We need to assume, or excuse me, verify that we're getting signal from the AV node. So let's see if we're, you know, if the atria is doing uh, what it needs to do. So I look in front of these beats to evaluate for my atrial activity here, and I do see some P waves in front of my QRSs. Those P waves, if you kind of scan throughout here, they're upright in lead one, and they are upright in AVF. So that tells me that those P wave morphologies are going down and to the left, which is very characteristic of a sinus P wave. So I'm starting to think, okay, sinus P wave in front of my QRSs. We've got a left bundle branch block morphology. Well, let's make sure that the PR interval is correct and consistent so that we can verify that each of those sinus P waves is, you know, correlated with a QRS complex. And so I look and I measure my PR interval. Maybe I'll use this one since this QRS starts on a solid line. And my PR interval for this QRS is 120 milliseconds, which is normal. Normal is 120 to 200. And so I want to look at all of those PR intervals throughout the strip, and maybe I'll come down to a rhythm strip here. I want to look at all the PR intervals to make sure that they are the same, and they do appear the same. And then now what I need to do is I need to look at these pauses, and I need to see, do I have any extra Ps, right? Do I have any extra P waves? Because I want to figure out if this is a second degree AV block, is the pause caused by a dropped QRS, or is this something else? And so I look closely, and what I like to do is scan through here, and I don't see any P waves, but I need to make sure that this T wave doesn't have any P waves that are buried on top of it. So I'll compare it oftentimes to the previous T wave, and they both look the same. So I don't see any extra P waves. So my thought is now, this is probably not a secondary block, this might be atrial by Jiminy, right? So I'm thinking this could be atrial by Jiminy. And atrial by Jiminy means that there's a premature atrial contraction that happens after every other beat. And so I look closely at my P wave morphologies. Maybe I look up here in lead three, 
And you notice that my first P wave looks like so. And the next P wave, it does look a little bit different, right? This P wave is a negative deflecting P wave. This one kind of has an upward deflecting P wave. So those are certainly two different morphologies. Let's look at maybe lead V1 right here. You can notice it's very subtle, but you have this small spiky P wave, and then you kind of have this bifid P wave. So this tells me that there are two P wave morphologies. They're very similar, but I would say that this one is likely ectopic, right? Where is it coming from? Well, if my sinus P wave is coming from my sinus node right here, traveling down, and if my ectopic P wave looks very similar, I'm sure that the ectopic P wave is probably coming from somewhere very close to that sinus node and has a vector of depolarization that is similar but not exactly the same, right? So these are all premature atrial contractions. Here's PAC there. Here we've got PAC. We have another one there, another one there, another one here. So these are all premature atrial contractions, and it lines up that my QRS morphologies are all following this left bundle branch block pattern. So I have currently PAC in a bigeminal pattern, atrial bigeminy. The PR intervals are the same. There's no drop P wave, so this is not a heart block. And so now let's measure our intervals, make sure that we've got everything right. We've already measured our PR interval. We've already measured our QRS complex, said that it was wide. We explained that it was wide based on the fact that we we're getting conduction from the atria via the AV node down to the ventricles. Now, let's make sure our QT interval looks pretty good. And I look midway between the R to R intervals, and you can see that that QT is not really even approaching halfway through, and that's even on a premature beat. So I would say that my QT is pretty good when I take a look at it. Um, my QRS axis, let's take a look at that. Just make sure that there's nothing that we're missing on the left bundle branch block. Um, my QRS is upright in lead one. It's down going in AVF in this find. Uh, it's upright in AVL. It's negative in lead three, but it's positive in lead two. So it looks like maybe left axis shift. I would say my axis is left axis shift, which is in line with left bundle branch block. Um, left bundle branch block, you tend to see that you lose these septal R waves, right? Because remember, the left bundle, if you remember, it actually depolarizes the septum from left to right. So if I look here, this is my transverse plane. Remember, transverse, like a horizontal cut through my chest, and here's my chest leads. And the left bundle, sitting right here, is the first region to depolarize that ventricular septum. And so those waves go from the left bundle towards the right side of the septum. So initial QRS complexes have little upright R waves. And those little upright R waves before the rest of the QRS complex, those little upright R waves representing septal depolarization. So sometimes you'll lose septal depolarization in a complete left bundle branch block. We have a little bit of that septum depolarizing here, um, but that's okay. Um, biggest thing is that we've got those late forces heading towards the lateral leads, which is also a big reason why we have big negative deflections in V1. So we're looking to look for pathological Q waves here. Um, I don't see any pathological Q waves. If you look really closely in the inferior leads, some might say, is that a pathological Q wave in lead three? There is this little upright deflection. And so sometimes you could say, eh, I don't know if that's a pathological Q wave. Pathological Q waves, though, generally are not just going to be in one lead. They're going to be in some of the contiguous leads. So I could look at AVF as well, and I see that this one does not have a pathological Q wave either, right? There's that start with that R wave. So no pathological Q waves, no ST or T wave changes um, outside of the normal strain pattern that we get with left bundle branch blocks where you see this QRS and then this kind of strained T wave in the lateral leads, right? That's, that's pretty common. I don't see anything that really meets any ischemic criteria. So let's put this all together and what do we get? Um, we get a sinus rhythm. I guess I didn't even do the rate. Let's do the rate. Our rate here is, you know, sometimes whenever you have bigeminy, every other beat's a little different. You can count all of the beats on this strip. It's a 10 second strip, multiply it by six. Let's just do that for ease. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So 12 times six is 72 beats per minute. I'm sure that's not exact, but we're in the ballpark. So we've got a rate of 72 beats per minute. We got a sinus rhythm with atrial bigeminy and a complete 
left funnel branch block. So hope this helps and um, leave comments if you have any questions. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next EKG video. Have a great day.